Today we are going to learn about a cool tool that is Terraform and we will use it to launch VPC, subnets, EC2 instance and uh, other AWS related resources. So before going forward, I assume that you already have uh, knowledge of Terraform and uh, basic knowledge of AWS. So if you don't know the basics of Terraform, then you can go ahead and uh, watch our tutorial on installing and setting up Terraform and launching an EC2 instance with it. So let's go ahead and see what we are going to do with Terraform today. So you can refer the blog post which we have written and uh, here you can find all the code snippets and the commands we are going to run. Our end goal is to create VPC, public private subnet, internet gateway, route table, security groups, key pairs and EC2 instances using Terraform. So we will be creating two instances for a web server and for a database server. The prerequisites you should have AWS account and basic understanding of AWS related terminology like route table, subnets, VPC etc. Then you should have access key and secret key of your IAM user. Your user should have minimum permission to create all these resources. So you should choose the secret key and access key of a particular user which have access to all these kinds of resources. Uh, you should have credential file of AWS in this file. So this is where you are going to put your secret key, access key. By default Terraform will pick up the credential from these files. The next thing would be we will require a public key out of a private key through which we will be able to SSH to our instances that we will create. So you can create that using ssh-keygen and by providing your private key file. My private key file name is mumbai.pam which is available here and I have already created a public key using that command. So this is the public key I have created. Now you can see the content of the public key. Here it is. So uh, we'll be using this public key in the Terraform script. Let's go ahead. So the Terraform files uh, extension is .tf. So first we are going to create global variable file that is variables.tf. In this, we are going to say that the region we are going to use is app southeast one. So this is a variable AWS region and the default value is app southeast one. Similarly, we are going to specify the CIDR for VPC and we are going to say this is going to be our VPC and then the public uh, subnet CIDR should be this and similarly for private subnet CIDR should be this. The AMI we are going to say is this AMI ID. Uh, you can choose any sort of AMI from your AWS marketplace. Then the public key which we have generated, you need to provide that here. So either you can give the name of the public key or maybe you can specify the public key itself. Then we have a file provider.tf. So Terraform provides uh, many cloud provider and on-premises cloud so that you can create uh, your infrastructure on any cloud. So you need to specify the cloud provider here. So we are going to say that the provider is AWS. So it could be Google Cloud Platform as well. So this is our provider.tf and then we are creating VPC subnet, internet gateway and other stuff using the file vpc.tf. So this file have all the resources that we are going to create. So first we are defining our VPC that uh, the CIDR block should be this which we are picking up from the variable.tf file and we are enabling DNS hostname true and the name of this VPC is going to be test VPC. Then we are going to define public subnet. So here we are specifying the CIDR from our uh, variable file and we are specifying availability zone and we are giving the tag name web public subnet. Similarly for private subnet which we are going to use for database instance then we are going to define internet gateway and then route table and uh, in the route we are specifying the CIDR block and gateway ID and then we are giving it the name public subnet RD now we are going to assign the route table to the public subnet so that our uh, public instance can communicate with internet through that gateway then we are going to define the security group for public subnet so we are saying that um, traffic on port 80 is allowed from anywhere and we are specifying ingress on HTTPS as well and then uh, other sort of stuff like allowing SSH on port 22 we are specifying egress that means uh, and we are giving it to anywhere so that our instance should be able to access internet then we are specifying the VPC ID 
and uh, we are giving it the tab then we are specifying security group for private subnet uh, here are the ingress and the tags this contains all your resources then we are creating a key pair in resource.tf here we are specifying that the private key that it is going to use is mumbai.pam so it will get associated with the instances and you will be able to SSH to it now we are defining web server inside the public subnet we are telling the AMI should be this instance type is t1 micro key name is this subnet vpc and other sort of stuff uh, one more thing here to note is we are providing user data so we already have tutorial on user data so you can watch that and uh, you can understand what user data is so in brief uh, user data is a script or the set of commands that you can run while launching an instance so if you are creating a fresh instance those sets of command will be run while booting the server so we are reading it from user data.sh i'll show you this so here is our user data.sh first we are enabling the debugging so that uh, every command output should be there in the logs and we are saying that all the output of this script should go to where logs user data dot log file then we are installing httpd and we are starting httpd and uh, we are putting certain html content in the uh, default index file then we are creating the database instance we are providing all the necessary things like ami instance type key name etc uh, and this is the user data so we already have gone through all the scripts that we need and here are the scripts you can uh, copy that down from our blog so let us go and uh, run it so initially you need to run terraform init command but uh, i have already initialized it and we are going to run terraform plan terraform plan command do is it will give you the output what all resources it is going to create so here it has given me certain output let's go through it so uh, it is going to create all these resources aws instance.dv with ami this and so on and uh, one more instance then internet gateway then key pair and uh, what all resources we have specified so it is going to create all these things uh, let's check if we have any instances or anything uh, already created so as of now we don't have any instances and we are in singapore region that is app southeast one yeah, we already have mumbai.pam file and uh, as you can see there are no subnets that we were creating and let's see if vpc is there so okay our required vpc is not there so terraform plan will give you the output what all resources it is going to create to actually create it you need to run terraform apply it might take some time okay it has started giving some output so it is using the key pair and uh, it is creating security groups and uh, security group creation complete then route table associating with web public rd now it is creating the instance so okay let's go ahead and see if vpc has been created or not okay so test vpc has come up this is what we have created this is the internet gateway we have created let's go ahead and see if instances have come up or not okay the instance has come up this is the web server and this is the database server so it is getting launched status checks are still initializing okay the script has completed so it has created all the resources let's wait for this instance to come up so this is our web server and this do have a public ip and we can try to ssh into this instance as well so to ssh you need to specify the private key file the user and the ip okay we are inside it now let's see we have we provided user data so logs must have been created in where log user data dot log okay so what all things it has done is uh, it has it must have installed httpd the installation is complete then it has started so starting httpd is okay and it has uh, put this html content inside default index file let's see if it is accessible or not okay so hello from aperture uh, it has done all the required stuff now one more thing you need to understand is if you change any resource it the terraform is going to terminate that resource and recreate it so for example if we change user data and uh, hello from aperture and let's write keep learning and keep sharing let's save this and run terraform plan to see what it is going to 
oops we are inside the instance let's run terraform plan and let's see what it is going to do as of now the instance are still running so everything remains as it is but uh, this user data is new which forces new resources so it is going to terminate the instance of web server and recreate it with the new user data so as of now we have this ip 71119 and this instance is going to get terminated as soon as we run terraform apply let's try this out so it is not going to change any other stuff apart from this particular instance as the change lies in this resource only okay now it is destroying the instance of web server let's see okay it is shutting down it is still destroying so the termination of this instance is taking a bit of time let it run and we'll check the output later uh, so as i was saying that you can go through the basic stuff tutorial that we have on our channel and uh, please do subscribe to keep us motivated and also share the stuff to help others uh, you can also go through how to use user data in aws so we have a blog post on the same in which uh, you can understand how user data works and you can uh, actually try this out this is really a cool thing and helps in automation let's go ahead and see the script has completed okay uh, the instance has terminated new instance must have come up okay the new instance is here this is the new ip let's try and ssh into this okay since the instance is still creating uh, it is not able to connect to it okay now we are able to ssh let's see the logs so our changes has applied hello from epichip keep learning and keep sharing let's try to access the ip okay here's the change so this is all about creating necessary stuff in aws so you can go through the documentation and you can create more resources other than what we have seen in this tutorial so this is all for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it any questions any suggestion please do comment like subscribe to keep us motivated keep learning keep sharing thanks for watching